Joe Stedman again. This is uh, installment two of my ASL um, teaching uh, series. And this time I'm going to talk about the introduction to the basic pieces of the game and how they work. And maybe do a brief overview of the sequence of play. So let me zoom in and show you one of the pieces, the inventory pieces, and explain it. All right. Here we have some unpunched German and uh, British counters. The uh, piece we're looking at there is a first line German squad. I know it's first line because in the top right corner I see that number one. It's first line, then there's, that would be an elite. And the, 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 the number on the right there kind of shows you the basic um, uh, quality of the troop. That can actually be reduced through combat. So there's a first line, and then there's a second line. Actually, that's a half squad. All right, so here's a first line squad. That's uh, the full size unit. And then right below it, you can see there's a half squad. So it's about half of that. And there's a first line squad. And there's a second line squad. So you see a four, six, seven compared to a four, four, seven. You see the stats slightly change. All right, now, so the top right number shows you the uh, quality of the troop. The first number that you see there, that four, is the basic firepower of the unit. The six is the range, how far away they can shoot. And the seven is probably the most important number on there. That's the morale, the morale of the unit. And morale in this game is uh, basically how tough a unit is and how much firepower they can take. Now let's flip it over the back. All right, here on the back we see the, the, the reverse side of the counters, and that's going to show you the broken troops. So you can see the guys laying down all hiding, hurting, you know, casualties, whatever, and it shows that number there, that number eight in the bottom right corner. That is his morale value while he's broken. So and that's a very important when I start explaining the rules. Uh, and then we have the information counters. So, uh... Let's see here, DM, that's desperation morale. And these are all be explained as we play the rules, but you can see there's lots of little pieces. All right, so that's the basic unit, uh, infantry unit. Yeah, so you know he's got, the things that matter are his firepower, how far away he can shoot in hexes, and his morale. Those are the, the most important things. And there's a little other things that might be on the counter that will come in later and I'll, I'll teach you when I get to them. Now the basic sequence of play, the very first thing that we're going to do in starter kit is the rally phase, which means that your troops from previous turns who have been shot at and now are hiding down in the floor or, or hiding behind trees or they're broken, they're, you know, they're, they're scared, they're going to have a chance to try to return to their fighting ability or, or to be flipped back right side up because when a troop is broken you flip them upside down to symbolize that he's broken and then if you roll the right number that number that's on the back or less he will return to active duty so that's the first thing that we're going to do and this is just a very general overview of the sequence of play because there's actually many other things that you can do in the rally phase but that's the basic uh thing that you do during a rally phase, especially in a starter kit. After the rally phase is going to be the prep fire phase. Prep fire means that you fire all your guys that don't want to move. So if you're the if it's your turn, if you're the if you're the active player and you want to prep fire, you you'll use your different troops around the map to shoot. So let's say that you know that there is the enemy uh, in this building and you want to shoot at the building and not move this turn, you can designate different squads or uh, guns or whatever to shoot. And if they prep fire, they can't move later. After the prep fire is the movement phase, so anything that did not prep fire can now move around the board. And while you're moving, this is important, while you're moving, the enemy can shoot at you. So uh, there's a whole other sequence of how that works. So as you move, you can, the other player can take turns. So be careful how you move, because if you move right through the open or across the street and there's an enemy unit there, he's going to shoot you and probably kill you. All right, after the moving phase is the defensive fire phase. So now the other player, even though it's your turn, the other player is going to get a chance to fire at you with any of his units that did not fire at you while you were moving. Let's say that uh, he was going to hold his fire until you got to see how close you were going to get. And now it's his turn, so he can shoot with you. Uh, at you with all of his troops. After he fires, then we go to the advancing fire phase. So any of your troops that did not prep fire, 
now can fire. And since it's the advancing fire phase, they're not going to be able to fire at full effect. They're going to be basically firing at uh, half power. Because they kind of ran, so now they're running and now they're shooting as they're running, or they're shooting after they're done running, so they're not going to be as accurate. After the advancing fire phase, we have what's called the route phase. And this is where any troops that were shot at and were broken during the the firing phases will now try to run away. And there's a sequence that you have to do for this to dictate where your guy runs away to. Um, so that you can't just run them where you want to, there's actually rules. And if they have nowhere to run, they'll surrender or they'll be shot and things. After the route phase is the advance phase. And this is an interesting aspect. Whoever's turn it is now can move all of his units on the board one space, any to any adjacent space. And this symbolizes low crawling up or whatever, and they cannot be shot at during this phase, and that's very important. This is also how you enter into the next phase, which is close combat. Close combat is when two people are in the same hex. Then they're going to duke it out right there in the hex. And the only way that you can ever be in the same hex with someone is that during the advance phase, you advanced in there because you can move one hex, so you advance into that phase. And now that we resolve that, and that's very bloody, uh, as you can imagine. So after the close combat phase, is that's it. You uh, record the end of the turn, you flip. So if it was turn one, let's say American player, now it's turn one German player. And then after we've both done our turn ones, it goes to turn two, turn three. In most scenarios are five, six, seven turns long. So, and you have to meet certain criteria to win scenario conditions. Which we'll talk about next is in the time remaining in this video is victory conditions. Every scenario you play is gonna have a different victory condition. Um, how the German player wins. He has to capture this building. He has to exit the board with so many points. He has to um, uh, eliminate so many uh, Americans. So you don't have just kill everybody in the game until there's no one left on the board or anything like that. Every scenario will be different uh, based on what the scenario designer has chosen. So. It leaves for lots of uh, interesting tactics because if my victory can, and all the victory conditions are open. Um, I know in some other games they do hidden victory uh, conditions and things, but not, this is not an ASL. And you basically know as the defender what the attacker is trying to do and vice versa. Most of the time it's one player is trying to do something and the other player wins by preventing him from doing so. So that's, that's the object of the game is to succeed in the victory conditions. All right, so I think I'm just about out of time for this segment. And uh, so I've given you now a basic overview of the game, why I like it, and I've given you the basic sequence of play and a basic look at the uh, counter uh, piece and show you what's on the piece. So next time, I hopefully will be able to get right into the rally phase and show you more detail on that. So see you next time.